Oh, he's given the shaka. Obama gave the shaka. The hang loose. The Hawaiian hang loose. That's like the surfer greeting. He's doing it again. That's the. He's a he's a kick-ass body surfer. I'm just. I can't believe he gave the shaka. The first ever presidential shaka. How you doing, Jersey? Welcome to the Star Ledger. That was me yesterday watching uh, the parade yesterday when Obama gave the Hawaiian shaka symbol, also a greeting used by a lot of surfers. What you can't see on that video is the looks on everybody else's faces around here, completely blank, thinking, what is this freak getting all excited about? But you know what? I'm psyched to have a president who actually knows how to ride a wave. My whole life I've had, we've had presidents who play golf, hunting, what is Bush? Clearing a brush off his ranch, horseback riders, peanut farmers, lame stuff. So it's cool to have a president who knows how to ride a wave. A lot of Jerseyans can relate with that, I think. Another cool side to yesterday's inauguration was the ways in which Jersey's presence was felt in ways seen and unseen. Of course, we're always looking at things through a Jersey lens here. Now, if you listen to the speech yesterday, Obama mentioned George Washington, 1776. The troops had their back against the wall. The army is on its last legs, and they rallied back. Well, what he's talking about there is the Battle of Trenton. Here's a clip from that. In the year of America's birth, in the coldest of months, a small band of patriots huddled by dying campfires on the shores of an icy river. The capital was abandoned. The enemy was advancing. The snow was stained with blood. At a moment when the outcome of our revolution was most in doubt, the father of our nation ordered these words be read to the people. So you see, New Jersey's greatest export has always been its attitude. So when Obama needed a little bit of that in his speech, he knew where to come for it. Also yesterday, Michelle Obama knew where to go when she was uh, picking out her gown, her dress actually for the inauguration. She turned to a Jersey girl, designer Isabel Toledo from West New York. You have a story. You can check that out also on NJ.com with photos and an interview with Toledo as well. Keeping with the Jersey theme in yesterday's inauguration, Star Ledger reporter Jennifer Weiss was down in D.C. yesterday at the inaugural ball, the New Jersey inaugural ball in Washington, D.C., and she caught up with a New Jersey politician who's often mentioned in the same breath with a Barack Obama as one of a new generation of African-American leaders. I'm talking about Newark Mayor Cory Booker. Check it out. It was an extraordinary day. I feel like I'm 10 feet tall. My chest is out. I'm so proud of our nation, so proud of our president, and just excited for New Jersey and Newark. There's a number of mayors around the country uh, that are sort of together in this. A lot of up-and-coming next-generation mayors, as well as some of our older uh, uh, sort of mentors, people like Mayor Bloomberg and others. And we have been sticking together. We, A lot of us were together on an education rally, which is something you don't expect during an inaugural weekend. All right, also in D.C. yesterday with Star Ledger columnist Mark Biono, who traveled down there in a pre-dawn bus ride with a group from Newark called the People's Organization for Progress. I talked with Mark a few minutes ago. Mark, you got on a bus at 4 a.m. yesterday and got back at 1 o'clock last night. Yeah, it was okay. a long day, a very interesting, long journey. Uh, um, it, it was amazing to just drive down sort of in the dark, and then all of a sudden it's light out and you're in Washington, and you get into uh, New York Avenue, and there's... The, the stands and the vendors are all out, and there's people hoofing it into the mall. Uh, the bus is parked at RFK Stadium, uh, the old RFK, where the soccer team now plays, uh, DC United. And we had to then walk to shuttle buses, uh, and then we took those shuttle buses to uh, 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 basically north of the of the um, Washington Monument, and so then all this, had to walk. All this, what's, the, what's the spirit of the, the feeling of the people there? Well, you know, it was just, it was really, a, it was an amazing thing to be part of a crowd. I didn't hear any complaints. I didn't hear, it was very orderly. It was a slow go, a long march, a long, torturous march. But the enthusiasm was, uh, uh, was really a, a spectacle in itself. Uh, there was a great energy in the crowd, a great enthousi enthusiasm, sort of almost a giddiness 
uh, a giddiness of inconvenience. They, they were kind of happy to go, be going through all these paces right. to get there. Now, you went down with uh, People's Organization for Progress, which is a progressive liberal group. And you told me that your, one of your biggest impressions yesterday was that Obama re reminded you of uh, Ronald Reagan. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, uh, what Barack Obama is, is a great American idealist. Uh, he, he's a super patriot. It, it comes across in the words that he says. Uh, yesterday in that crowd, it was a sea of American flags. Uh, you know, we have suffered through 16 years of really polarized politics in this country. Ugly stuff. And uh, many people who are of a, of a significant voting age, that's their only experience with America. They don't remember the Reagan years when he sort of kind of gelled people together and, and, and gave a, a renewal of this great American uh, spirit and patriotism. Have you told a lot of people in that crowd yesterday that he reminds you of Reagan? They wouldn't have been happy to hear that. Well, I don't know. I think yesterday everybody wanted to be an American. Everybody was an American. Uh, I think that this is what Barack Obama is, is going to do for the country. He is going to put American first. And, and basically, his speech yesterday said that. He talked at great length about the American ideals from the founding fathers on and, had, and how these ideals are the things that we pass along. It's about being an American first, uh, a Democrat second, a Republican set third or fourth or whatever, a, an African American later, an Italian American later. It's about being an American first. And he talked about uh, also Reagan, you know, Obama maybe being able to do things politically from where he stands sort of like Reagan was too, who, who was a Republican who brought the working class and middle class. Right. I think that he has a public mandate that I have not seen in my lifetime since Ronald Reagan. I think there is a public mandate with, for this guy that, that everybody is pulling for him, except for some of the arch conservatives who aren't really listening to what he's saying. Right, right. You know, they're looking at him through a, a different lens. All right, Mark. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Get some sleep. Okay. All right, Mark's exploring some of that Reagan-Obama analogies tomorrow for his column, so check that out in tomorrow's paper and also NJ.com and NJVoices.com as well. You can read Mark's column there. All right, that wraps up Ledger Live for today. Listen, we want to hear from you. Ledger Live at startledger.com is the email address, and you can always go on to NJ.com, log on, and sound off on the news blogs there as well. All right, Jersey, take it easy. <laughs>